Hey, what's up? Everyone deserves to know what a really great fresh baguette right out of the oven tastes like. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to make one. Let's be totally honest. Outside of France, the word baguette is used very loosely. And I'm not here to police and call people out on fake baguettes. But to me, a baguette means one very specific thing. We're talking about flour, water, salt, and yeast that's fermented to make something that's crackery, toasty, creamy, and tender all at the same time. In my mind, the place to start when you're talking about a really great baguette is how we ferment it. Our baguette is gonna be paying tribute to a classic style pre-ferment, which is called a poulish. A poulish is basically just flour and water that we mix together ahead of time with a little bit of yeast and we let it ripen on the countertop overnight before we mix that into our final bread dough. For our poulish, we're gonna mix together 150 grams of bread flour and 150 grams of room temperature water. To that, we're gonna add a very small pinch of yeast. Once all that's stirred up to combine, we're gonna let it sit on the countertop overnight for about 12 to 16 hours. The next morning when we come back, our poolish smells really sweet, it's very yeasty, and it's all boozy and full of gas. In my mind, making a poolish is the ideal way to build a ton of flavor and complexity into a yeasted dough without over-fermenting it or making it tired and sluggish. Now we're gonna move into the beginning part of our mix here. So grab your stand mixer or a stainless steel bowl if you're doing this by hand, which is entirely possible, by the way. Into that bowl, we're gonna measure 240 grams of warm water Water, all of the ripe poolish that we ripened overnight and 400 grams of bread flour. AP flour will definitely work here too if that's all you have, but I like bread flour here for you guys at home, mainly because it makes the shaping part of this baguette a little bit easier later on. We're gonna start by mixing this on low speed just until things are well combined. At this point, we're gonna move this dough into a quick 20 minute auto lease to slowly hydrate this flour. For a quick refresher on what auto lease is and why we do it, check out the sourdough tips video from a few weeks back. I'll link to that down below. Once everything's combined, we're gonna cover the bowl with a tea towel just to keep things from drying out. We're gonna let that hang out in auto lease for about 20 minutes. And after that, we're gonna come back and add two grams of yeast and 10 grams of malt powder. We're gonna start mixing on low to get that combined and hydrated before we add our salt. Malt powder is not 100% necessary, but it does go a long way in replicating a pro level baguette at home. This is just one of the small adjustments I've made to this formula to make it a little bit more friendly to the home baker. Most professional bread bakeries have access to a flour called malted flour. This just means that a very small percentage of the flour Flour is supplemented with malted or sprouted barley flour. Adding malta flour increases its fermentability, but it also gives our crust that distinctive, brittle, shiny, almost dark red crust that we really want in a hearth style bread, especially a baguette. I got this stuff for like seven bucks on Amazon, so it's kind of like my B Man's Home Bread Hack. 2020 edition. Once our yeast and malt powder is well combined, we're gonna add in 11 grams of salt. I'm gonna continue to mix this on medium low speed for about two minutes. At that point, I'm gonna turn up my mixer to about medium high and need for an additional two to three minutes or until the dough clears the bowl and starts to slap the sides a little bit. Listen, there's a real art and science to mixing dough out there for sure, but small batch home dough mixing is just a matter of making it strong enough. So give it a hard time in the bowl to get there, maybe about four minutes total. At that point, we're gonna wrap it up with plastic wrap and we're gonna set a 30 minute timer. After that 30 minutes, we're gonna give this dough our one strength building fold. I like to stretch the dough out till I feel real tension and then just fold it back over itself. After five to six of those folds, we're gonna grab this whole mass of dough and kind of just fold it up under itself to create a nice, taut, shiny top. At this point, the dough should be plenty strong for a baguette, but if you're doing this by hand, you might want to add a second fold at the 60 minute mark just to make sure that it's getting all the way strong. Mine's feeling good, so I'm going to move on. We're going to set a two hour timer. While that dough's fermenting, I'm going to mention that for real baguettes at home, you probably need a lame. A lame is just a term we use for a fancy razor blade holder that bakers use to cut slits in the bread. For these baguettes to open properly and to get the look and texture of a real baguette, we need uniform slanted cuts that go pretty deep into the dough. I'll link to this one down below if you're interested. This one came with a leather blade cover, which is very helpful for safety as these are super sharp. So stay frosty with these things. Okay, so it's been two hours and our dough has roughly doubled in size. It looks alive and is pretty gaseous. I'm gonna flip this dough out onto a lightly floured work surface and I'm gonna divide it into four 225 gram pieces. Where's my freaking dough card at, dude? Oh, 
I turned this into a four piece recipe just so you could have some extra baguettes to either share with friends or even freeze them. I figure anytime you're gonna go through the trouble of making and fermenting something, it might as well be a big batch so that future you can benefit from your hard work now. Once we've got our dough cut into four 225 gram size pieces, we're gonna gently turn them into little taut rounds. This is called pre-shaping and we do this mainly to give ourselves uniform pieces of dough to start shaping with. The move here is to use your left hand with the dough scraper to push the dough and your right hand to kind of pull it back towards you and tuck it under. You don't want to go too crazy getting these too strong and tight. The dough's pretty dry and doesn't need a lot of help. We're just looking for a nice simple round shape. Once we got these pre-shaped, we're going to let these stand here and rest for 20 minutes under a tea towel. After 20 minutes rest time, we're going to come back to shape these baguettes. To properly proof a shaped baguette, you're going to need a little piece of fabric called a couche. This is a pretty rustic canvas cloth that we use to separate and support the little torpedoes of dough once we've shaped them. If you want the real deal baguette set up at home, I definitely recommend grabbing one of these off Amazon. I think this one was like 12 bucks and it's very similar to what we would use in the bakery. So the real challenge of making a great baguette is in this step, the shaping step. Okay, to start, we're going to clear the work surface off by flipping the other three dough balls into a lightly floured surface out of the way. Once you've got your single dough ball, we're going to lightly flour the top and flip it onto that side so that the bottom is facing up. At this point, we're just going to gently degas it and push it into a general rectangle shape. Starting from the top, I'm going to use the tips of my fingers to press and roll this dough over up and into itself. Each time I roll it, I'm pressing it down and pinching it forward just to seal it up. Now we're gonna be rolling this tube that we've made back and forth, putting pressure in the seam with our thumbs when we push forward and pressure with our fingertips when we pull it back towards us. This rolling hand triangle move is how we stretch these out into a baguette shape. As we get these stretched out more and more, we use a little bit more pressure on the ends to taper it off. That's how we get those signature points on the baguette. Be sure to keep the seam side down and use a little bit of pressure from our fingertips and thumbs when we're rolling this back and forth. Once we've shaped our baguette to roughly 12 inches in length, we're going to transfer this over to our floured couche. The dough needs to be supported on both sides, and to do that, we're going to be pulling the canvas up with a little bit of slack, creating a little bit of hill on either side that acts as a barrier from the other baguettes and also as a support. We're going to shape up the rest of these baguettes and we're going to couche them up just as I described before. To proof these, we're going to fold the linen over itself just to wrap the whole thing up. Make sure the sides are flipped over enough to create a little bit of support and tension on the outside baguettes, almost if there was a ghost baguette out there holding it up. Once we're wrapped up, we're going to let those proof on the counter for about 45 minutes. At this point, I'm going to preheat my oven to 550 and put my baking stone in there to preheat. This might seem like a really high temperature, but home ovens aren't very powerful, so we're overshooting on temp a little bit just to help replicate the thermal mass of a deck oven at a pro bakery. So after 45 minutes, our baguettes have risen quite a bit. When I poke them with my finger, you can see an indent, but that indent kind of pops back. That lets me know that they're kind of at that perfect sweet spot of proofed. So to bake these baguettes, we're going to pull out our baking stone and put it on something that can handle the heat. I've got a metal rack here. I'm going to give the stone some semolina flour to prevent stickage, and then I'm going to transfer these baguettes over using what I call a flip board. This is basically just a sturdy piece of cardboard from a box in my basement, but anything the length of a baguette that's kind of sturdy and flat will do, and then slide it onto the stone. We're going to repeat this for both baguettes. Once I've got these on the stone, we need to arrange them a little bit just so that we can make sure they fit under the lid. Once we're all situated, we're going to grab our lame and make three to four very deliberate diagonal slices on an angle. And after we're scored properly, we're going to grab a lid. Mine is a stainless steel bowl. This cover is necessary to trap all the steam we need to get these baguettes to spring properly in the oven. Once I've got this stone covered, I'm going to load the whole thing into the oven and turn it down to 485 degrees. I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes with the bowl as a cover. During this time, the baguettes are going to spring and rise and after that 10 minutes we're going to carefully remove the bowl and finish baking these on 485 for an additional 8 to 10 minutes. I usually go the full 10 minutes because I like my baguettes quite dark. 
You know they're done when the outside begins to have a dark tan, almost reddish quality to it. When it's got that good dark color and it feels almost hollow on the inside, we're gonna pull it from the oven and let it cool for about 10 minutes. The only bread I eat hot is usually a baguette. We've worked really hard for that brittle, crispy crust by making a poulish, using malt powder and fermenting this whole thing very carefully. So it's never gonna be better than after that first 10 minutes. So grab some fresh, grassy, salty butter, smear it all over, and let's eat some. Mm. So that's a classic French baguette at home. There's a few special moves here, but with a little bit of practice, you can totally do it. It's totally worth it. I had a ton of fun breaking this down for you guys today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I will help you guys out the best that I can. As always, thank you guys so much for your time and attention. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah.